<laughs> I was terrible, terribly nervous. My collar stud flew off, and I had to hold on to my collar with one hand, and he did not seem impressed with me at all. <laughs> he was very curious about you. Did you know there was an article written about this school in the Morning Post? The other candidates. They appeared to be brilliant. I had never thought they would be somehow. There were two from Eaton and one from Harrow, one of them very rich. I never thought a scholarship man might be richer. He had his own servant. And the servant looked so like my father, <laughs> I thought it was at first. And as I was leaving, the examiners appeared to be sorry for me in some way, and I received the impression that I had failed. I, if I have failed, <laughs> don't speak about it. I know, but I have been to Oxford and come back since then. I've come back from the world. Since the day I was born, I've been a prisoner behind a stone wall, and now somebody has given me a leg up to have a look around on the other side, and they cannot drag me back again. They cannot. They must give me a push and send me over. That's just it. I can talk now. The three days I've been there, I've been talking my head off. <laughs> That's just it again. It would be everything I need. Everything. Starling and I spent three hours one night discussing law. Starling, you know, the brilliant one. The words came pouring out of me. All the words that I had learnt and written down and never spoken. I suppose I was talking nonsense, but I was at least holding a conversation. I suddenly realized I had never done it before. I had never been able to do it. How are you, Morgan? Nice day, Mr. Jones. Not bad for the harvest. A vocabulary of 20 words. All the thoughts that have been given me were stored away as if they were being, as if they were always going to be useless. Locked up and rotting away. A lot of questions with nobody to answer them. A lot of statements with nobody to contradict them. And there I was with Starling. 19 to the dozen. I came out of his rooms that night, and I walked down the high. That's their high street, you know. I looked up, and there was a moon behind Mag Maudlin. Not the same moon I've seen over the Nant. A different face altogether. Everybody seemed to be walking very fast with their gowns on in the moonlight. The bells were ringing, and I was walking faster than anyone else. And I felt, well... <laughs> the same as on the rum in the old days. <laughs> and all of a sudden, with one big rush, against that moon and against that high street, I saw this room. You and me sitting here studying, and all those books, and everything I have ever learnt from those books, and from you, was lighted up like a magic lantern. Ancient Rome, Greece, Shakespeare, Carlyle, Milton. Everything had a meaning because I was in a new world. My world. <laughs> and so it came to me why you worked like a slave to make me ready for this scholarship. <laughs> I've finished.